This is Will Murray for Educator.com, and we're here today to talk about the law of cosines, which is the second of the two big trigonometric rules. Remember last time we talked about the law of sines. So you kind of put those together, and together those enable you to find the length of any side and the measure of any angle in a triangle if you're given enough information to start with. So let's start with the formula here. The law of cosines is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. So let me draw you a triangle so we can see how that applies. Remember the convention is that you use lowercase a, b, and c for the sides of a triangle and uppercase a, b, and c for the angles. And you always have the, you use the same letter for the angle and the side opposite it. So my uppercase A goes here, and my B goes here, because it's opposite side B, and here's angle C. So the point of the law of cosines is it relates the lengths of the three sides, A, B, and C, little a, little a, little a, little b, and little c, to the measure of one of the angles, which is capital C here. So the point is that First of all, you can use this in any triangle. It's not just valid in right triangles. Remember, the big rule we had, SOHCAHTOA, is only valid in right triangles. But the law of cosines is valid in any triangle. Um, it's a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem in the sense that you remember the old Pythagorean theorem was just c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Of course, that only works in a right triangle. But if you look at the law of cosines, if angle C is a right angle, then the cosine, the cosine of pi over 2 or the cosine of 90 degrees is 0. So if angle C is a right angle, then this term, 2AB cosine C, drops out. And so the law of cosines just reduces down to the Pythagorean theorem, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So you can kind of think of the Pythagorean theorem as just being a consequence of the law of cosines. The law of cosines is the more general one that applies to any triangle. And the Pythagorean theorem is the more specific one that just applies when angle C happens to be a right angle. So let's see how it's used. Um, the law of cosines is really used in two situations. First of all, it's used in a side angle side situation. So that means where you know two sides of a triangle and the included angle. And the reason it's useful, let me write the law of cosines again. c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of capital C. The point here is that if you label these sides as little a and little b here, and then this, that makes this angle capital C, and little c is down there, if you know the side angle side, in other words, if you know little a, little b, and capital C, then you know all of the right-hand side of the law of cosines. So you can then solve for little c. So that's why the law of cosines is useful for side angle side situations. It's because you can fill in everything you know on one side of the law of cosines, and then you can solve for little c. It's also useful for side angle side situ or for side 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 situations. Let me draw that. So side, side, side means you know all three sides of a triangle, but you don't necessarily know any of the angles yet. But the point is, if you know little a, little b, and little c, then you know all of these parts of the law of cosines. And so you can solve for the cosine of capital C and you can figure out what that angle capital C is. So then you can figure out what one of the angles is. And then you can just kind of rotate the triangle and relabel what A, B, and C are to find the other two angles. So if you know all three sides of a triangle, the law of cosines is very useful for finding the angles one at a time. Remember, there's a couple other ways that you can be given information for triangles. You can be given angle, side, angle, or side, angle, angle, or side, side, angle. And those two don't really lend themselves very well to, <coughs> excuse me, to solution by the law of cosines. So if you're given one of those situations, then you really want to use the law of sines, which we learned about in the previous lecture. There's one more formula we're going to be using in this lecture, which is Heron's formula. And the point here is that if you know all three 
lengths of sides of the triangle, I'll call them A, B, and C as usual, then you have a nice formula for the area. And it's got one more variable in it, this S. And S is 1 half A, B, A plus B plus C. That's the semi-perimeter. Remember, the perimeter is the distance around the edge of the triangle. So that's A plus B plus C. The semi-perimeter is just 1 half of A plus B plus C. So we worked that out ahead of time, and we call it S. And then we plug that into this formula that's a fairly simple formula just involving S and then A, B, and C. And it spits out the area of the triangle for us. So that's very useful if you know the lengths of the sides. You never really have to look at any angles and you don't have to get into any sines or cosines, so no messy numbers there, hopefully. So let's try out some examples here of the law of cosines. First example, we're given a triangle ABC. Let me go ahead and draw that. So I'm going to put A here and B here and C here, which forces the angles. Remember, the angles go opposite the, letter, the sides with the same letter. And we're given that A equals 3, B equals 4, and angle C measures 60 degrees. And we want to first of all determine how many triangles satisfy these conditions, and then we want to solve the triangles completely. So to answer the first question, we have a side angle side situation. And so what we know is that side angle side always has a unique solution, assuming the angle is less than 180. So in this case, the angle is 60, which is less than 180. So there's a unique solution. There's exactly one triangle satisfying these conditions. So that answers. The first question, how many triangles satisfy those conditions? Exactly one. But now we have to solve the triangle completely. And this is where the law of cosines is going to be useful. So let me copy down the law of cosines. c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of capital C. And this is very useful because we know uh, a and b and capital C. So I can just plug all those in and solve for little c. So let me do that. A squared would be 9. B squared would be 16, because 4 squared is 16. Minus 2 times 3 times 4. 2 times 3 times 4 is 24. Cosine of 60 degrees. So this is 25 minus 24. Now cosine of 60 degrees, that's one of my common values. That's pi over 3. And I remember that the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. So this is 25 minus 24 times a half, 25 minus 12. So c squared is 13. And so c is equal to the square root of 13. And I can get an approximation for that on my calculator. That's about 3.61. So that's approximately equal to 3.61. So I'll fill that in on my triangle. So now I've got the third side of the triangle. The only thing that's left is it says to solve the triangles completely. So I need to find the, ang the other two angles, A and B. And to do that, I'm going to use the law of sines. So let me write down the law of sines to refresh your memory. Sine of capital A over side A is equal to sine, I'm going to use capital C over side C. And so I know what side A, side C, and uh, capital C are. So I'm going to cross multiply this, and I get C sine A equals a sine c. I'll fill in the values that I know. I know a is, uh, little a is 3. Sine of c is sine of 60.
sine of a, I don't know that yet. And little c, I figured out, is 3.61. And so I'm solving for sine a. That's 3 times sine of 60 divided by 3.61. So I'll just work that out on my calculator. And what I get is approximately 0 0.72. By the way, it's very important that your calculator be in degree mode if you're using degrees here. So I gave uh, angle C a 60 degrees, so it's very important that you set your calculator to degree mode. If your calculator is in radian mode, then it will interpret that 60 as a radian measure, and so your answer will be way off. So set your calculator to be in degrees before you try this calculation. And so A is arc sine or inverse sine of 0 0.72. So I'll work that out on my calculator. And it, that tells me that A is just about 46.0 degrees. So now I've got a measure for angle A. I'm going to use the law of sines to find a measure for angle B, but I need a little more space. So let me redraw my triangle. We've got um, whoops, A, B, and C, A, B, and C, and I figured out that C was 3.61. A was given as 3, B was given as 4, C was given as 60. And I figured out that A was 46 degrees. So I'm just trying to find the measure of angle B now. And I'm going to use, again, the law of sines. Sine of B over side B is equal to sine, I'll use C again, sine of C over little c. And I'll fill in what I know here. Uh, I know that little b is 4. Sine of capital B, I don't know. And sine of capital C is sine of 60. And little c, we figured out, is 3.61. So I'll cross multiply that, 3.61. Sine of capital B is equal to 4 sine 60. And so sine of capital B, that's what we're solving for, is equal to 4 sine 60 divided by 3.61. So let me work that out on my calculator. 4 sine 60 divided by 3.61 is 0 0.96. 0 0.96, 0.96. And so B is arc sine of 0 0.96, and I'll work that out. That's 73 point, just about 74 degrees, rounds to 74 degrees. So now I've figured out angle B, 74 degrees. And so now I've solved for all three sides of the triangle and all three angles of the triangle. It's nice at this point, even though we're done with the problem, to get some kind of check because we've done lots of calculations here. We could have made a mistake. What I'm going to do is add up all three angles of the triangle and make sure that they come out to be 180 degrees. So as a check on my work here, I'll add up 60 plus 46 plus 74, and that does indeed come out to be 180 degrees. And so that suggests that we probably didn't make a mistake in solving all those angles. So just to recap this problem here, we were given a side angle side situation. That's a definite tip off that you're going to be using the law of cosines. So I filled in my side, the included angle, and a side. 
And then the first thing I did was I used the law of cosines to find the missing side. The law of cosines to find the missing side. To solve the triangle completely, I still had two angles that I didn't know. So I used the law of sines after that to find the two angles that I didn't know based on knowing the other sides and the other side and angle. So let's try another one now. In this one, we're given the side lengths of the of triangle A, B, and C are 5, 7, and 10. So let me draw a possible triangle like that. 5, 7, and 10. And we want to find out how many triangles satisfy these conditions and solve the triangles completely. So the first thing to do with this problem is to identify what we're given. And we're given a side, side, side configuration. Now, that usually gives you a unique triangle. But what you have to do is check that each side is less than the sum of the other two. So let's check that out. Unique if each side is less than the sum of the other two. So that'll be a real quick check. We're comparing 5 with 7 plus 10. Well, 5 is certainly less than 17, so that works. 7 should be less than 5 plus 10. And that certainly works. 7 is less than 15. And 10 should be less than 5 plus 7. And that certainly works. If any of those checks had failed, if, for example, 10, if, if it had been um, 13, 5, and 7 instead of 10, 5, and 7, then the last check would have failed because 13 is not less than 5 plus 7. At that point, we would have stopped and said, this is invalid. There is no triangle that satisfies those conditions. But since all those three conditions checked, um, it does mean that there is a unique solution. So there's exactly one triangle with those three lengths of sides. And now we found all the side lengths. We need to find the angles. And this is where the law of cosines is really handy. So let me write that down. The law of cosines says c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. Now you can label the uh, sides and angles whichever way you want. Uh, I'm going to label the top one c. And actually, let me write that outside the triangle. And so that makes the bottom side C and then the two other sides, A and B. And so what I can do here is I can plug in little a, little b, and little c. And then I can solve for the cosine of capital C and in turn solve for what angle capital C is. So let me do that. Um, if C is 10, so that's 10 squared, equals A and B is 5 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 5 times 7 times cosine of capital C. So now it's just a little bit of arithmetic. 100 is equal to 25 plus 49 minus 70 cosine of capital C. And so 25 plus 49 is 74. And if we pull that over to the other side, we get 26 is negative 70 cosine of capital C. And so cosine of capital C is equal to negative 26 over 70. And so now I'm going to figure out that C is arc cosine or inverse cosine of negative 26 over 70. And I'll do that part on my calculator. Remember, you have to be in degree mode for this. And what I get is that C is approximately equal to 111.8 degrees. 
So that's 111.8 in that corner. Now I'm going to go over to the next page and I'm going to keep going to find out the other two angles. We find them exactly the same way. So let me go ahead and redraw my triangle. 5, 7, 10. We've already figured out that that angle is 111.8. Now what I'm going to do is relabel the sides and the angles because I still want to use that law of cosine. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of capital C. But I'm going to relabel everything here so that I can label C as a new angle and I can solve for a new angle. So I'll relabel that angle as capital C. And then my A and B will be 7 and 10. Oops, sorry. Capital C will be 7, or small c will be 7 and A and B will be 5 and 10, and we'll go through and we'll work that one out. So little c squared, that's 49, is equal to A squared, that's 100, plus B squared is 25, minus 2AB, so that's 2 times 10 times 5, cosine of capital C. So let me work this out. This is 125. 49 equals 125 minus 2 times 10 times 5, that's 100, cosine of capital C. So if I subtract 125 from both sides, I get negative uh, 76 is negative 100 cosine C. Divide both sides by negative 100 and we get 76 over 100 is equal to cosine of capital C. And so C is equal to arc cosine or inverse cosine. 76 over 100. And I'll plug that into my calculator. It tells me that that's approximately 45, or sorry, 40.5 degrees, 40.5 degrees for that angle right there. Now there's one angle left to find, and again I'm going to relabel um, the sides and the angles so that I can continue to use the law of cosines in its uh, standard form, so I don't have to change around what A, B, and C are in the law of cosines. So I'll do this in red. Um, in red, I'm going to call this side, this angle capital C, and that means I have to relabel my sides. So that means little c is equal to 5, and a and b are 7 and 10. And so now I'm going to plug those values into the law of cosines. c squared is 25 equals a squared is 49, 7 squared, plus b squared is 100, minus 2 times a times b, 7 times 10, times cosine of capital C. And now it's a matter of solving that for capital C again. So I get 25 equals 149, minus 2 times 7 times 10, that's 140, cosine of capital C. Uh, if I subtract 149 from both sides, I get negative 124 is equal to negative 140 cosine of capital C. And so cosine of capital C is equal to 124 over 140. And so C is equal to arc cosine, inverse cosine, of 124 over 140. I'll go to the calculator on that. And I get 27.7 degrees. So let me fill that in, 27.7 degrees. 
So now we've solved the triangle completely. We've, we started out with all three side lengths, and we found all three angles in the triangle. So we're really done, but it's always good to find a way to check your work. Let me check my work in blue here. Again, I found all three angles, so now I'm going to add them together and see if I get 180 to check that out. So I'm going to add up 111.8 plus 40.5 plus 27.7. And what I get is exactly 180 degrees. So that tells me that I must have been right in getting those three angles for the triangle. So just to recap here, what we were given was three sides of a triangle. We were given three side lengths. So that was a side, side, side situation. Um, we had to check that the three lengths, uh, that we didn't have a situation where two sides added up to be less than the third side. So we had to check that each side was less than the sum of the other two. Once we did that, we knew that we have exactly one solution. Then we fill in the side lengths on the triangle, and we use the law of cosines. The law of cosines lets you fill in three side lengths and then solve for the cosine of one of the angles. And so you work it through, solve for the cosine, and then you get each one of the angles by taking the arc cosine. And then you just go through a separate procedure like that for each one of the angles. In our third problem, we're trying to find the area of a triangle whose side lengths are 5, 7, and 10. Now, this one is really a setup for Heron's formula, because Heron's formula works perfectly when you know the three sides of a triangle. So we're going to use her own here. Her own says that the area is equal to the square root of s times s minus a, s minus b, and s minus c. Now you've got to figure out what s is. s is the semi-perimeter of the triangle which means one half of the perimeter, one half of the sum of the three side lengths. So that's one half of 5 plus 7 plus 10, which is one half of 22, which is 11. So I'm going to plug that into Heron's formula. wherever I see an S, so that's 11 times 11 minus 5 times 11 minus 7 times 11 minus 10. And then I'll just work on simplifying that. That's 11 times 6 times 4 times 1. So that's the square root of 264, 11 times 24. <coughs> Excuse me. So that problem was really pretty quick if you remember Heron's formula. Heron's formula is very useful if you know three side lengths of a triangle. Then what you do is you work out the semi-perimeter. You just drop the side lengths into this formula for the semi-perimeter. And then you drop the semi-perimeter and the three side lengths into Heron's formula for the area. And it simplifies down pretty quickly to give you the area of the triangle. So we'll try some more examples later on.